I'm this is Steve Weintraub with Collider, and uh, I'm here with the people, the filmmakers, the star, the writers uh, of The Lost King. And I really want to say a sincere, this was one of my favorite films that I saw at this year's Toronto International Film Festival. So I just want to say thank you for the hard work that you put in to make it. Thank you. Thank you. Same. Um, so before we jump into the movie, I like uh, throwing a few curveballs right at the beginning. And I'm always so curious, if someone has actually never seen anything that you've done before, what is the first thing they should watch and why? Well, it's a, it's a story, and in this case, it's a good story. I don't think so. I think that I would turn your question on its head. Why does somebody have to have seen another film that we have made in order yeah. to watch this yeah. one? This is a good story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. believe me, yeah. I'm, tell, I'm telling people to watch The Lost King. Yes. But when I, when, I, when I ask the question, it's more like, um, is there something that you're really proud of from your past that you would like people to see? 50 years work. <laughs> 50 years work, yeah. Um, uh, well, I'd say I'd say that uh, without picking out a specific piece, I'd say that that the pieces that we've made together, yeah. uh, it's about the interpretation of some extraordinary real event. So it's it's that's the thing that I love with the stories that I take on is, you know, they work as a really fascinating story in any case. But then then there's that caption at the front that said this all actually happened. So that's what I think, um, that's what I love about this story. You cannot quite believe that a woman from Edinburgh, housewife, yeah. found the bones, body of a 500-year-old 500 dead king in a car park. It's all true. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, if anyone was, you know, Jeff, Steve and I last worked together on uh, a film called Philomena, and that's a good place to start. Um, if anyone hasn't seen that, they really ought to have, if they're uh, if they if they if they're interested in film. Yeah. I, I agree, and I believe Philomena was also at the Toronto Film Festival. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yes, no, yes, yeah, it was great. Yep. Yeah, I, I remember seeing it when it was here, and I'm like, oh, these guys are really good together. This is, and, and I'm very again, I I'm a fan of what you guys do together. Um, jumping into actually, I have one question for you before we get started into the film. What's cooler? Uh, having a film in the Toronto Film Festival or playing with Coldplay at Wembley Stadium? Uh, well, play, do, play, uh, singing with Coldplay at Wembley Stadium is, whether that's cool or not, is a, an academic question because there, there are some who might think it isn't. Um, it was certainly a lot of fun and um, uh, it's great to be able to do that kind of, uh, that stuff and nonsense, of, um, quality nonsense. It was, there, it was there, but no, uh, of course, being at TIFF is far more, uh, there's more substance to being at TIFF than uh, singing with Chris Martin, even if it is in front of 80,000 people who are mostly there for, for Coldplay rather than me, I have to say. <laughs> Most, well. Yeah, yeah. Jumping into why I get to talk to you guys today. Um, I know that making any movie is a challenge. Um, talk a little bit about getting this off the ground and getting this film made. Was it one of these projects based on your previous work that it was a lot easier to make? Or is every film still a huge challenge? Well, they are a challenge, but we made this film for Pathé, a French company that operates in England, and we've done, I've done a lot of work for them. We made Phenomena for them. You know, they made money out of it, quite honestly, and so, as it were, we're, it's easier for us than for anybody else. Um, I think in terms of, uh, you know, Steve and Jeff and I are, are, to do lots of different things on our, on our own with other people, um, but we... Um, you know, we, we had a successful collaboration on uh, Philomena and uh, this story uh, has so, some, some similarities that uh, it's also about a woman um, uh, battling against uh, big vested interests and uh, again, against a huge Goliath, if you like. Um, uh, and so I, 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 met, I met Philippa about eight years ago, I think now, possibly eight, eight years ago. Um, and... Obviously, I, I've, I've got a long collaboration with Jeff, and uh, I talked to Jeff about having met Phil, uh, Philippa, Philippa Langley, who's the subject of, of The Lost King, uh, along with Richard III. Um, so I, you know, I met her and told Jeff about it. Jeff was interested, and then you sort of gather momentum, and Jeff and I started writing something. And then, of course, we went to, our, uh, to Stephen, because we know we'd worked well with him before, and thought it would interest him. And, um, and uh, it all sort of happened organically, I suppose. 
yet I did not know much about this except for the brief stuff I saw in the news. And it is such a crazy true story. Um, can you sort of talk a little bit about when you're making a film like this, balancing where's that line for fact and fiction in terms of where you feel like you can take liberties and where you want to make sure it's as factual as possible? I th okay, it, it, I'll answer that. It's um, There's nothing in the film that isn't um, that's unfair or that isn't either directly verbatim or a conflation of something. So where, where the dramatization would occur would just be in, you know, th this was, a, this was a, a quest for many years for Philippa and it's boiled down to a 90, 100 minute film. So there's conflation, there's, there's timelines that are squashed um, and there's, um, there, there's also the, the, the really difficult thing. I mean, it took Steve and I about kind of four years before what's, there's, there's a moment in the film which is why, why she gets hooked by Richard III. And there were all sorts of reasons in real life, but, but it took us about four years but before we thought, oh, that, that's it, that's it, it clicked. So, um, and, it, and it was just a simple thing of her taking her son to, because he was doing O-levels, um, to, to go and watch uh, Richard III at the theatre. Shakespeare, Shakespeare's Shakespeare. Richard III. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. And there was a connection. Yeah. So, no, there's nothing that's unfair in it, and there's nothing that is pure fantasy. Yeah, I think we're quite, I think Jeff and I are quite uh, ethical about when, we, yeah. when we've, you know, actually a few, things we made two, but there's a few things where we work. Jeff certainly works a lot on true stories, but certainly when we work together, we feel like uh, there's a sort of, um, uh, we're quite ethically responsible. Um, you know, we all, all the fundamental truths of the story are, are, mm. are you know, intact and uh, I think are pretty unassailable. You know, um, if we do, when there, when, there, when there are blanks, I think Hilary Mantel said this about her, her historical fiction, you know, where, where we don't know, then you're allowed to use conjecture. Um, and there's a lot of artistic license um, in this film. Richard III appears physically to our hero, heroine, um, played by Sally Hawkins, uh, very well, I have to say. Um, but, um, you know, so we, there's artistic license there. You know, we, we, we bring Richard to life, even though he died 500 years ago. So it's, a, it's an impressionistic uh, piece. It's not a documentary. Sure. Uh, one of the things is that uh, I, I think your film does a great job at asking questions about who was Richard III, really. Mm -hmm. And um, did you have a, did you, when you went in to make the movie, did you have a certain opinion of Richard III? And has that changed from making the film? Yeah, that's a good question. You want to well, in a way, the whole, that's what the whole thing's about. Uh, Olivier's performance as Richard III in the film he made is so sort of stamped on the world. Uh, you know, Shakespeare wrote him as a punchback villain. And I guess people like Philippa question that. I mean, I have no idea whether they're right or wrong. But they've now, they've, it's actually gone further and they've now <laughs> discovered one of the princes, one of the little princes in the tower wasn't murdered because he's buried in an English churchyard. <laughs> so, so the whole thing is being undermined. In fact, there was an English novel which started yeah. questioning this mm. quite a long time. I mean, before my time, as it were. So um, called the Daughter of Time. Daughter, Daughter of, time. of Time, Josephine Tay. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, there is an alternative view. Yes, that's what it is. We're not. It's not like there's a big political mission to sort of say this is what we think of it. So that it's all wrong. It's questioning why people are painted in a certain way. And Philippa herself, you know, that. Um, People are sort of put in a box and and sort of and, and car caricatured and uh, uh, which and Philippa herself I identified with with Richard in that respect because she felt she'd been judged uh, harshly if you like and um, it's more about you know why people are are caricatured like that historically and otherwise you know there's, uh, the Tudors came after. Uh, Richard the Third, and it was in their uh, after the Plantagenets, and then it was in their interests to demonise the the powers that had existed before, including Richard the Third, um, because it served their purposes. So, it, it we're just sort of um, th we hope the film shakes things up a bit, but it, it's ostensibly not really about Richard the Third. It's more about you know it's about a woman who 
goes on a search, goes looking for Richard the Third and finds herself, finds out who she is. Uh, I am a big fan of your work, and I think that one of the strengths is the way you work with actors. I always buy into the performances in your films, and I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about how you actually like to work with actors on set and before you step on set. Yeah, I'm always slightly embarrassed by this question. I would just say, well, I hire them. <laughs> and I've thought about them, why we're going to this person rather than that person. When people are well, when actors are well cast, they become very happy and very confident and they respond. Mm. If they're unhappy or they're giving a bad performance, then you're in real trouble. But the mistake is always mine. If I've cast someone wrongly, it's my fault. Well, do you want to talk a little bit about how he worked with you? Well, I mean, I, I, but Stephen, I mean, my, my role's quite odd because I'm an actor in it and I'm also one of the writers. Um, in fact, Stephen sometimes would stand next to me and shout, writer, and then go, oh, there you are, you know, um, which never ne was never not funny. Um, but uh, I, I, mean, I always felt that, that very, very comfortable with Stephen. He's, he's not, he doesn't say very, he doesn't, uh, I always find it debilitating if a director does a long, long deconstruction of how he wants something done because you, after about 30 seconds, you sort of can't remember what, what's being said. Stephen's quite straightforward and simple and, and just a couple of words like speed it up a bit, slow it down a bit, do it louder. Uh, I mean, the most effective direction Stephen gives to me is when he looks across me and just does that with his hand. And that's, that's all I need. Really. <laughs> quite low key in this film so if you did that you might disappear uh, that's true actually yeah. well i was i'd taken the note from the earlier film and, and assimilated it into my performance <laughs> uh i'm obsessed with the editing process because that's ultimately where a film comes together mm. and could you talk a little bit about what it was like in the editing room and maybe what you learned from friends and family that impacted mm. the finished film it's edited by a great canadian editor mm. pia is canadian canadian yep. italian but she is actually canadian and i think is in this city at this minute well, can you talk a little bit, of the, uh, though, about... So I'm sure you showed it to some friends and family. Well, what, you, it's just a process, doesn't it? And you go on chipping away and someone says yeah, something. Yeah. Oh, I see. And you, you, you slowly start so to understand find, what it is you've done. I think it was that Stephen... Well, I think I came... In, well, he, Stephen's not precious, and I'd say that, it, when he's in the edit, because I'd say, what about if you do that? And he goes, well, let's try that. And then you try it. And uh, I remember on Philomena, we, 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 we tried something different, and he went, yeah, that's that's... He, he, he was quite not, it, if someone had an idea, he would try it out quite happily. Mm. It, there's no, there doesn't, it seemed very ego free when, when, um, when, uh, whenever I came in there. And um, I would see him put things together, try something and then, and then put it back the way it was before, you know. And, um, yeah, it's quite, it seemed like to me when I watched Stephen in the edit, I, yeah, I, it was I, a pragmatic process. Not, 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 uh, yeah, the, the, the film, it, it, the, the, the process isn't, the, that, that's part of the creative process, is that, that the time I'm not the sure you know where you're going when you start a film. Yeah, yeah. By the, by the time you finish, you've found out where you're going, but I don't know that, in, in all honesty, you know at the beginning. When they say, well, what's your film about? What was your vision film? I don't know what people are talking about when they ask me that question, mm -hmm. but slowly you work it out and you mm -hmm. have some instinct that I guess it'll end up in an interesting place and there's something inherently interesting to what's being written. I, I, th I think this was a, an edit, though, to go back to your question, which needed every, uh, every step of the process before it took flight and, and became the film it is. Uh, so obviously there's the edit, then there's the, then there's the, uh, the dub, the grade, and the music. And I, and I think once all those pieces were in place then it just took off it's a, I think it's a miracle that films get that are successful at all because for, for it to work almost a, well everything has to go right and for it to, to fail only one or two things have to be wrong and because and, when everything works it becomes more than some of its parts it, it sort of exponentially yeah. grows into something yeah uh, that you, you that's slightly beyond your control but uh, but generally um, so it, it always amazes me when when it when it does all, when it all comes together. Was Philippa a challenge to get on board or was she immediately when she, you know, knew your work and she said, oh, you guys might be able to handle this. She, she took some, um, she took some persuading because um, uh, luckily Steve was, not long after we finished Philomena, Steve 
reached out to Philippa and she'd had other offers. Um, she was, um, she, was, know, yeah. she was an intelligent woman, uh, very determined. She'd been through a lot and yeah. um, she wasn't about to let the uh, process of the, f uh, of the she, film about yes. her life being repeating what had happened it's, with what happened after she found Richard III. Yeah, I think she, she didn't want us to make another caricature, like did, uh, sort of do a Richard III job on her. Yeah. Um, I think she was concerned that we might trivialise her um, in the way that she had been trivialized by others. Um, but we, um, but, uh, but, 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 and, and the, I can see she thought there was a danger of that because of course we wanted to make a feature of her and she wanted it to be all about Richard III. We wanted it to be about her and Richard. And, uh, and so, so, uh, and she's, she has sort of an eccentric uh, quality that we wanted to delve into. Um, and that can make someone a, uh, vulnerable and that's counterintuitive for someone who doesn't want to be um, perceived as as uh, weak so um, but the, the film uh, celebrates Philippa uh, so but, to, but to, to get to that point of celebration where you sort of elevate someone you have to sort of go through a challenging journey to get there and so, uh, so but once she understood that it was basically going to um, be in her favor really? then she was happy for us to go on this little journey where we where we look at her personality the, the film so the film is hopefully the end of a very long journey for her you mm. know what a massive stop along the way was finding richard but then you know the the credit and the claim that she was due was sort of she was edged out of the picture she wasn't really given um you know, proper recognition for what she'd done. And, and this film is, redresses that. This yeah. film is the end of that journey. That's true. I, I did say to Philippa, this film will be the end of your story, is that it, the, the film is part of her story now. It's, it's, the, it's mm. the, uh, the coda to, uh, to, her, to her odyssey. I, I am so curious, what, has she seen the film? Yes. yes. And what was it like showing her the film? Because I think she should be incredibly, like, happy with the result. I think it, this film does a great job at, at shining a light on everything she did. Um, but what was it like actually waiting for her to finish the film, knowing, you know, this is her story? Were you there that day? No, no, no. I met her, I met no, her two we, days ago. I was, there, I was there that night. Was that the first time you met her? Was some, two days yeah, ago. Really? Yeah, that was a conscious decision. Oh, I, wow. I didn't want to meet her. Too confusing. Yeah. Yeah. But I said, did we get it right? She said, absolutely. Yeah. Sally yeah. met her. Um, it was, it was, there was a deafening silence because of, she was sitting right in front of me and she couldn't respond. And she said, can, can, she had her sons and her husband, ex-husband with her. And so we just walked out of the theater and it was a good half an hour, 40 minutes. And she was very, she was, I think, run over by it, but gradually, you know, th th those around her talking about it. And then she watched it again and she's very happy with it, but it, it was a, trauma I, I guess it is, it is quite traumatic because it's very exposing to see your your life and your inner turmoil depicted on a big mm. screen um yeah that's a, an odd experience i'm sure for anyone we we we, 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 we fit richard appears uh, as an apparition played by harry lloyd but um that wasn't just that wasn't just steve and i thinking oh let let's do that because it'll be funny or whatever it talking about where things come from that was because she let slip that during the, the journey, she would have conversations with him in her head, thinking, what would, what would you say if this happened? Or what would you think about this? And then it, in the end, it took us many, many years, I guess, of pain, but we thought that's the way to unlock that. Um, um, and, and, you know, she was really happy in the end with how we did it, because there's some humour in it as well. I mean, you know, that was a big thing with you, wasn't it, Steve? You didn't want it, last thing you'd want for this piece is to be po-faced. Well, it's such a daft story. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is mad. It's, it's, yeah, I think, well, I always like, I like, I love the fact when I work with Jeff and I've worked with Stephen is that you can, you can do something that has substance, yeah. uh, but that, but it, but it, you can make people laugh along the way and, and, and you can, you know, you can, you can say something worth saying and entertain people at the same time. And that's, you know, that's, that's all you can hope for. I think. Oh, completely. You guys um, work very, very well together. 
So I have to ask, are you, and please tell me the answer is yes, but are you talking about doing anything else together in the not so distant future? We're all, always. We're, all, we're always talking. We're always talking about something. And for all the things you talk about, you know, like two percent of what you talk about actually ends up being made. But yeah. but, but but yeah, I mean, I think we uh, we can we can yeah. we can. Well, sometimes Stephen comes to us. Sometimes, but the things that we work together, it'll be the final arbiter will be Stephen. Hmm. Is is he? Does he think there's something in that? He wouldn't. Is, do, you know, Stephen wouldn't do anything with it with us unless he thought it was good. Wh whoever we are, yes, and however much he enjoys our company, yes, um, he, uh, he, 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 you know, it has to pass muster. Yeah. He's quite. I think he's quite. There's no old particular. pals act. No, it, uh, I mean he would be. You know, he's, and, and also I think on both scripts, uh, Stephen's, you know, it was quite quite a good hard taskmaster saying what you know to, to, to say mm. what's this scene about what's it supposed to be doing you know it's just just so there's there's at least some clarity on 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 whatever the road map is that uh uh so it, it's worked well and i think it works well this time are, are you really that uh i was going to say uh, i was going to make a joke but I'm, I'm so you'll feel free no i'm not funny <laughs> sir i i wish i had that sense of humor but one of the things that i'm always curious about is how people decide or how a director decides on their opening and closing shot some directors i've spoken to give it a lot of thought uh, how you're going to be introduced and how you're going to be exiting and others it's sort of like eh, no big deal and I'm, I'm curious with your work do you give those opening and closing shots extra thought or is it eh, not not a big deal it's quite a long time since I've seen this film. Well, but uh, even <laughs> what is the closing but, shot? But even in um, the, no, in the closing the, shot is, is the, the tomb, the tomb, and the, and the royal family acknowledging yeah. the truth of what the film is saying yes. that Richard the Third wasn't a usurper. In fact, it was Henry the Seventh who was the usurper, as Josephine yes. says. Yeah. So, I don't think I thought about that. But when I saw it, I said, oh, that's right. That's very, very good. Yes, that, that's and how what was the opening end. shot? And the opening it ended with her wandering around in Edinburgh. Yeah, she's on her way into the office. Yes, that's right. Yeah. 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 So it sounds as though there was no thought given. To <laughs> <laughs> but as with the best of things, God is on your side. Or well, sometimes God is on your God, side. God is on your side. I remember in Philomena, for days, Steve was pacing around. Because it, it, at the end of toward the end, one of the end, almost the end sequences that um, Steve's character and Judy Dench's character go back to the convent where you know the baby was taken. And you, it, wasn't, it wasn't quite clicking. And then by magic, there was snowfall. And he said, I've got my end sequence. And it was like, well done for arranging that snow, Steve. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yes, that, hap that was, that really, you really have, was. You have so. to have God on your side. <laughs> if you don't have God on your side, forget it. Yeah, because we went back and reshot a scene and put fake snow in to yeah. match the real snow that had fallen by chance but it was it was it was yeah, magic it was, it was yeah, i'm it was sure great. stephen did have a word with someone up there yeah, that i yeah, need something yeah. doing here can we have a snow down and then it worked beautifully if you don't mind i'm going to ask each of you an individual question uh I, i'm so curious what your next film is going to be i read that you might be doing billy wild B billy wilder and me um is that going to happen or are you working on something else in the meantime i'm doing a job for hbo written by the people who write um the Rupert Murdoch one, Succession. Succession. Um, but then I hope, want, you know, fingers crossed, to make the film about Billy Wilder. It's a wonderful, wonderful script and project. What is the, if you don't mind me asking, what is the HBO project? It's about an Eastern European dictator, um, an imaginary one played by Kate Winslet, <laughs> which seems to me has many of the right qualities. <laughs> huh. uh, are you filming now or soon? No, we shoot in January. I will leave it there and just say I'm very happy. I'm looking forward to watching it. Um, individual question, if you don't mind. Um, I read about the Iceman. Yes. Is that so? You filmed this? No, no. The Iceman is hopefully going to start shooting towards the end of this year. What's filming now is a four-parter about Cary Grant. Really? AKA Archibald Leach. It's called Archie, and it's a, uh, it's a, it's a. Uh, uh, fascinating detail about his life uh, won't say too much more than that but uh, Jason Isaacs plays Cary Grant I, I enjoy Jason's work um, is this being done in the UK or is this a like who's uh, producing it who's making it it's uh, it's it's a uh, a streamer and terrestrial television co-pro 
Uh, and it's being, yes, it's being shot in the UK and Spain. Uh, and with the ice Spain. Spain. Is Spain for Los Spain Angeles? Spain doubles for Los Angeles. All right. Now you're giving it all away, aren't you? All yeah. right. Sorry. Anything I can do to undermine him? It's not got your HBO budget. All right. Yes. It's so funny, though, because I um, I spoke to someone involved in Marlowe, the upcoming mm. Liam Neeson film, mm. uh, where he plays, you know, Philip Marlowe. And mm. they shot Spain for 1920s Los Angeles. Yeah. And I, I found it fascinating. Yeah. We're sort of doing the same. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, 19... 19- 20s till the 1960s my individual question for you um so you i I, I read about the reckoning and you're playing uh i'm like you're looking at me like maybe i I got that wrong no that's fine right so was there any apprehension about playing jimmy or was there because he let's call him jimmy savile it sounds a bit too familiar (laughs) sorry you're you're right but um was there any hesitation because he i rarely use this term but he was a a monster yeah and a pedophile yeah yeah um, was there a debate on taking on that role? Uh, well, I thought long and hard about it. Jeff produced it. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I didn't say yes straight away. Um, but I thought, it, but you know, it was very well written. The cast, the, the supporting cast I had were you know, exemplary. Uh, so it had all the right, um, uh, all the things in place to make it something worthwhile and not exploitative or prurient or morbid um uh it, so i think it's a it's uh, and the script was very good and, and there was a lot of care taken over it and uh i felt like i could do it um you know he's uh he provokes a very very the, the real revulsion uh when i said i was doing it. a lot of people wondering why we're doing it but as all these things um, i think people it's a, he is a was a fascinating man and was able to hoodwink a whole nation uh, because he was so famous and successful and was at the time well loved by people before they discovered the awful truth about him. Um, but that, that, that by itself is, uh, is, I'm of the mind that, you know, to, to sort of prevent these things happening again, you have to look at them. It's like an uncomfortable yeah. process, but you, you sweep things under the carpet and try and turn your back on someone like this then i think the people a lot of the, the revolution is because people feel the whole nation was either hoodwinked or if you're being less kind complicit in enabling him to do the nefarious things he did and so um so it's important to look at so, someone like that i think it's interesting you know people play hitler and play serial murderers and no one bats an eyelid but there's a lot of consternation about me doing this um but i thought but um, as an acting job, it was, uh, you know, it's sort of what all actors want to do is play, um, you know, whatever your views on him, uh, a, a, a fascinating, um, although, you know, horrific, but certainly uh, a fascinating figure who really is a manifestation of something else that was sort of deeply wrong in, in British society. I think that's why it is. it's not just about him. It's about what kind of... Uh, society um, lays the groundwork for someone like him to to operate. So anyway, I mean, I think I think once it comes out, it'll it'll vindicate itself. I think it's. You know. Oh, I, I actually agree with everything you said, and I think that it is important for these stories to be made because and be told because look at it even today with athletes who do terrible things, and because they make so much money for certain people, they get away with some really questionable mm-hmm, things mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. the Weinsteins and everything it's else. It's about power, yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, I, I just wanted to say... Last time I was in Toronto, I was with Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> I There's a lot to say there, but I'm just going to leave it and say that... For oh, every, go on, elaborate. <laughs> an, another, another monster. Um, I just want to say for everyone watching uh, how much I loved this movie... Thank and you. I really hope that everyone at TIFF gets to enjoy it and everyone watching at home seek it out when it is eventually out. And thank you so much for coming in today to talk about it. Can I, say, can I say one thing? Of course. Somebody, a film critic, when Dangerous Liaisons came out, someone in Toronto, who I assume is a film critic, said, watching this film is like eating chocolate in bed. And I've always wanted to thank that person. Oh, <laughs> how lovely. Uh, thank you. I really mean it when I say. Uh, I think, sorry, oh, sorry. I think the, the, the Lost King is, is similar. It's like eating biscuits in bed. You know, it's not quite on the as, couch. Not quite as good. Yeah.
right. but still enjoyable. I, I'm, I'm, I really, I saw a lot of movies where I got here. This was one of my favorites. I, I really mean that sincerely. And I don't, I don't say that casually. Um, thank you so much. You guys have to go to your next interview. Thank you. I really thank appreciate you. it.